to shoot him! Our special guest today is Mystery Guitar Man. Hey, Rick. Huh? Rick. Uh, what? This hey. is Joe. Yo, Joe. What's up, man? Nice what to meet you. What do you know? Twing. We got more weapons for you. Oh, awesome. Yeah, well, what kind of weapon do you need? Have you seen the movie Looper? Oh, yeah. Great movie. You know movie. the blunderbuss that they have? The oh, little shotgun? Yeah. The blunderbuss. It only has a 15-foot range, but it hits its target every time. Yeah, yeah. It's right. gnarly. Yeah. We need that built. Three days. Three days. Yeah. There's only one reason why anybody would need anything in three days. You're a damn dirty uh, looper, aren't you? No, 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 no. I know it's you! <laughs> oh, all right. Well, as long as you pay on time and don't send my money into the future either. Sounds good. Good luck. All yeah. right. Well, welcome back to Creative Concepts. After last time, I didn't expect you guys back again. <laughs> Stop! What are you doing? Oh, uh, we were digging around the shop and uh, we found this in the wall. It's it, it kind of a, a, a dubious honor, I guess. The Looper Blunderbuss is a one-shot deal. It's kind of dumpy. It's got some cool details on it. We're gonna make this one work. Start out with a galvanizer black pipe, uh, about an inch and a half with a thread on the end. Nothing fancy about it, but it's got the weight. And I have prefabricated this. We take your simple uh, lighter starter for your fireplace or whatever. I got a cap that fits on the end of this and epoxied it into place. You just basically take your piece, screw it on here. So it's got like a handle that's pretty sturdy that you can hold. And then I weld it on these brackets to give it some stability. Put the tape on it here like this. There's a safety on most of these that you gotta press down in order to pull the trigger. And I put a little extension on here because it's kinda hard to get your thumb in there and uh, put a breather hole in the back. I turned a piece of this tooling foam, which is great. This tooling foam is awesome. Turned a piece of this down on a lathe and then hogged out the center of it to give us the, the, the end of the barrel, which then the final piece looks like this. So this is just the base. There's no details on it yet, but that will slip on you here like this. And then on this end, I turned another piece and that's kind of like our basis. So you can kind of see it starting to feel like it. So here we are at the table saw. This is where most of the detail is gonna happen. The foam that I'm using is 18 pound foam. It's, it's, it's great for sculpting and it takes fiberglass really, really well. Cause when we're finished, the whole thing is gonna get wet down and hardened with fiberglass resin. So there's ribs on the side of the, uh, the gun and there's also vents up and down and on the top. So what we wanna do first is we will uh, cut our thickness. Then we want to change the pitch on the angles. So our beveled piece. To make the, uh, the vents on this, we start out with a block. And I'm going to use quarter inch increments. That looks pretty good. I just keep advancing at a quarter of an inch. Anyways, after about 10 minutes of this, uh, they should all be nice and even. Uh, I'm gonna run it through this, the table saw to cut it to length. What I'm gonna get is this, which looks pretty cool, but it's gonna look cooler because we gotta chop it down. And I get a thin piece like this. Then how I get these little details on the side is I set the uh, saw, just have it so it barely kisses that. This piece will go on the top of the gun. This is the ridges that go on the top of the gun, but there's also similar grooves that go on the side of the gun. So then we got that part. Back at the bench. We've got our piece cut for the uh, slots, and I just want to kind of measure out. That'll give us our, our, our general spacing. The surface is curved, and the part is flat. What we want to do is prep the surface. So I, I have this pre-made. It's a sanding block. What I do is, I just kind of sand. So it, it bends to the curvature. This is the Sherline Mini Mill. I used to build toys, so uh, I worked a lot with these with these tools. I also have large mills and lathes. 
But for this, it's nice and convenient because it's small. I'm using a, it's like a 3 8 router bit. It's a plunge router bit, which is the right size for these guys. I got it marked out where I basically want it. I drill it until I can hear it go through. Then advance forward. As long as I stay in the middle there, I'll get I'll always get a nice straight line. When it's all finished, we'll look like these. Curved on the back, slotted in the front. As you can see on the reference, that piece basically goes there. And then this piece has got a bit of a curvature will go in here. So what I did was I took a piece of larger PVC pipe cut it on a bevel angle to the table saw. That will go in between our other pieces. And then we have our vents on the top. And those are for the most part the components. Ernie's and Greebles. Ernie's and Greebles, that's what we call little details. Little details like here and there. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do a build up on this piece here. Take the venting. I mean, it looks like there's a bevel in the front, too. So here is our head. Oh, there is some cool stuff we can do with this, actually. These grooves have to be cut into also. Now, the cut on this is cut this direction. So I'm using this as a gauge. The slots are gonna run midway between here and here, and then center line, which will be our slots. Back to the table saw. And then if you got a little bit of flash on there, you just take a little bit of sandpaper to it. You get kind of like that effect. this baby on here. So what we want to do is uh, start bringing in our parts. So these may have to be cut down a little bit. Line that with the top. Uh, the amount of heat that's generated in order to fragment the plasma inside the gun, the barrel gets very hot. So that's why it's so thick. And that's why we need the cooling venting on it in order to keep from the looper burning his hands. We're gonna start putting stuff in place here. The fiberglass too will also uh, keep it cooler. By shielding it in modern composites such such as fiberglass, it keeps it cooler, makes a more effective weapon. Little buggers won't even see it coming. <laughs> These are the basic details. So we pretty much got everything where it's supposed to be. Uh, there's a couple nerries and greebles to put on it. We've got to work on the handle. But uh, for the most part, if you're from the future and you're in my sights, you're a dead man. So welcome back to the House of Pain. Almost ready for fiberglassing. It's gonna hard shell over this foam. We're gonna put a weld through here and through here. I'm just kind of distressing the lines a little bit. We wanna do the, these chips here, nicks and chips and stuff that's actually on the, the, the actual one. Kind of distress the lines just a little bit so it looks worn. And getting ready to uh, lay in the screw holes. So it just gives you a bit of a divot there. And there's also the same rivet points in the nozzle. I like to have it clean and then age it. Clean them up and then knock them back. You don't want any little nerds in there. Not like Star Wars nerds, but like little bits of dirt and stuff. Let me get those out. Funny part is we're gonna put them back in to make it look natural and make it look rough. So this gun is actually about an inch and a half longer than the actual one, mostly because of the tail end, but there's not a lot I could do about that. So now for some of the uh, extra details, there's, it looks almost like a, a cocking mechanism on the bottom side, but I don't think it, it's actually practical. It's more like a hand guard. We can set the curvature. This is a shear form. It's used for sculpting foam. What we're gonna do is just kind of open this foam up. But this just gives it a little bit of a curve so it can kind of fit a little bit better. It's gonna cut it down. It's semi-rounded, so this gives us a base shape. 
Just draw that out like this. And then we just kind of sculpt it. A lot of times up close, film props are very rough. When collectors want them, they, they the collectors actually see the defects. This film props are generally made just like this kind of operation. Three or four days. I'm cutting a slight slot into this. You just gotta be very careful. Peel off the excess. A lot of doing this stuff by hand just takes practice. I'm a sculptor also. So it helps with model making. So you gotta be pretty well rounded in, in a lot, lots of different trades. That piece actually looks kind of hand sculpted too. Now there's two little bumps that go in here and here. Drop that in. So all I you do is use this as a as a shape. I just mark there and there. Normally I can use like a bandsaw or something to cut this out. I'm just gonna kind of preform it a little bit. And most of this stuff is found stuff from around the shop. If you have a little shop or uh, something like that, it's as messy as mine. You'll always find something that you can use. It pays to be a pack rat in my business. I'm gonna leave it just a little bit rough. So what I wanna do is I wanna cut some lines in here. So that's just a simple shape. We're gonna glue stuff now. I love DevCon Plastic Welder. It's great for everything. It's even good for patching holes in your teeth. I've done my own uh, dentistry with this before. Make sure you mix it real well. So what I want to do first is I put these little guys on. So I got these little Allen set screws. You get those little Allen heads in there. I'm not sure whether this is supposed to be a pump or not, but it is what it is on this, so. And then the handle, we're gonna have to cut, carve a block of wood for that. It's actually wrapped in white cloth duct tape. You can kind of see out this grinder will kind of distress the wood. A little bit of texture, a little rough, so that it looks a little bit more handmade. I'm just hacking it up here. So the more messed up I make it, the better it's gonna look, so. And I gotta leave this hole open, because that's a blowback hole. We need several more layers of tape on it. I'm gonna keep building it up and building it up and building it up. It's not exact, but I'm, I'm using some artistic license in order to have it work mechanically correct. I'm purposely trying to screw it up. So I want it to look all nasty like this. So I want to build up the handle in certain areas a little bit. So I'm using butyl. It's springy, it's chewy, it's butyl. You just kind of jam it in to kind of give it some, some thickness in certain spots. And then we'll go over it with tape again. Teeth, the tool that man has been using for millions of years. That's basically like that. I might go over and mess it up a little bit more, but I like this side, this side man. So I got to wrap this a little bit better. But, uh, all right, time for fiberglass, hard coat. It will keep it together and keep it nice and tough. So you can do many killings from the future. In the old days, in the 1700s, they had a blunderbuss and I have this, it's called a Dragoon pistol, which is almost the same kind of concept, except if this is black powder instead of uh, electronically actuated. This looks like a regular pistol, but the barrel's so big, you could put rocks, stones, nails, and the bigger versions, the handheld blunderbuss is like a hand cannon, which is th what this is designed after, would clear decks. You could just point in a general direction on a ship and it would clear out 20 people. Boom, just lay them out flat. So taking out one guy from the future that's in a uh, straight jacket and a mask over his head should be a lot easier. What we're gonna do is we're using resin. It's fiberglass resin, I don't know if you can see it here. It's a laminating resin. Uh, this is thin, I want it thin because I want it to absorb into the foam and hard turn the foam into like a hard plastic. Do you use MEKP, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. You only need a couple drops for this a little bit and you whip it up real nice. Make sure it's all mixed all the way through. You'll smell the change. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Scratch and sniff television. Every Kill Phil episode you get a card and there's different smells on it. Get, <laughs> take our brush, kind of pat it on, try to cover all the foam. You got to get down in these little vents here. You want to make sure that you got enough on there, but not too much. 
I don't want any drips because that'll give away that it's been laminated. This will also give it that smooth finished look that the actual gun has. Plus it'll give the illusion of steel. It's basically gluing all the parts together. Go over it a couple times so that it's kill worthy. If you use less than the recommended amount of MEKP, it'll go off slowly. If it was a really hot day, this stuff would go off a lot faster too. You stick it out in the sun, and it can kick in like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, when we come back, we'll do the scenic, the details, dial everything in, and, uh, and doing some actual killing. Day three, paint day. I did a color test on this so you can kind of see the different layers that we're going to do. We're going for like a uh, drop forged cast iron kind of a feel. So we're going to prime. As you can see, the hot glue is a little too hot and it's blending together really nicely, which is fine, but that isn't really what we want. What I like to do is use caulking or something like that and mash it in so it looks like a real weld and you, you kind of leave some of the uh, the bumpiness to it but these guns are kind of rough looking so i purposely made it a little rough so it looked like it was done by maybe not an expert so that's basically how you can do a weld so ready for that copper i just want to kind of dust it a little bit i don't want to get too crazy ready for the bronze coat and you want to leave a little bit of the, the copper to show through there's just a little bit of silver, just dust it lightly. So what we're gonna do is take a little bit of rust, get up in the cracks and stuff, and you just kind of wipe it off. You wanna be real conservative with it. You wanna hold back a little bit. You don't wanna get two nuts. This is my favorite part of the job, the final detailing. It looks pretty cool right now. It's kind of matte, but it's not really shiny or too interesting. You get this stuff, it's a rub and buff. It's a wax and, and metallic paste. So what I do is I take a little tiny drop, kind of, you want to dry brush it. You just want to kind of kiss the tops of things. It kind of brings out the super detail. Take a little bit of silver, get a little bit on a stick, and put in some highlight like chip marks. Now we're prepping out the handle. As you can see, it's been manhandled. It's just from being dirty from being in the shop. But that's basically what's gonna happen, but like a hundred times more. Wet it down. I've got this umber, and I get up all in, get all the tape, and then before it dries, I'm gonna wipe it off. Now, from here, do the same thing with a darker tone. So there you go, and if you don't like it, you can always spritz it with a little bit of water, and wash it down and start over again. But it's gonna, the more you mess with it, the more it's gonna look like what it's supposed to be, messed up tape. Hi, we're back at Rick's and it's day three and inside here we got a blunderbuss, right? Well, of course you got a blunderbuss, but it was three days of sheer hell trying to get this out. But we cranked it out and as always, I think it'll suit your purposes. All right, let's take a look. Let's see it. Oh, wow. All right. Awesome. This will work. That's it, man. So I think you nailed trick, it. Though. That is it. It's beautiful, man. It's, it's heavy. It's really heavy. Yeah, it's it's a composite of uh, pipe tubing, fiberglass resin, 18-pound foam, duct tape. I love the details. Yeah. This Very puppy nice. it actually works. Like the. Wait, does, does this actually work? Of course it actually works. What, what do you think I built it for? I mean, you, you said you needed something without serial numbers. It was disposable. Well, you know why I said that to you, right? Oh, why? I am a looper. Damn it, I Please. knew it! I thought... I knew it, I knew it, I told you! I shouldn't be here. How long is this gonna take, man? We're almost there, can you hold this? Yeah. Ready? Three, two... Shoot him! Hey, it's okay. Hey, it's okay. Hey, it's okay. 
get your film fix. Subscribe to Cinefix.